Pretty much since lockdown begun, every single day I've been going for a walk on the lovely Hampstead Heath, or even a jog if I'm feeling that way inclined. And that means that pretty much every single day I've been walking past the best pub in the world and been unable to go in. See, the Southampton is my local, and it's a reminder not just of the late night, the jazz piano, the pub quizzes, it's also a reminder of what I miss most about the pubs being closed, which is real ale. It's that gorgeous creamy head, it's that amazing fresh bread aroma, it's the tingle on your tongue of that light carbonation, and you just can't get that at home via mail order or even just brewing it yourself at home. Like, I'm never gonna get the perfect recipe, I'm never going to brew it perfectly. I'm never going to be able to condition it in a secondary cast to get that perfect amount of carbonation. Or could I? If I'm going to pull off traditionally served car scale at home, I've got a lot of work and a lot of research to do. The reason for that, and if you don't know what real ale is, there's a video coming up one of these sides now, is because I've got to create my own carbonation. So that means fermenting in a secondary container under pressure, which forces that carbonation into the beer. On top of that, I've got to find and connect up a traditional hand pull uh, lever. I don't know where I'm gonna get that from or how to connect it, so that's something I've got to add to the list. But all of that comes before the fact that I've got to find a recipe that I love and want to create and that a brewery will give me. So I've been thinking about all of my favorite recipes, things like Harvey's Best, Timothy Taylor, and I came up with Five Points Best. Now last autumn, we did a video with Five Points, who are an amazing modern and car scale brewer. And we went down to Hukin's Hops, where they're experimenting with lots of different British hops and also traditional ones like Fuggles, EKG. Uh, and we followed them as they made a wet hopped version. Uh, and we became friends with Greg. And Greg has agreed to give me his best recipe. And even more importantly, he's agreed to talk me through how I'm gonna go about that. You know, it took us I think six years before we sort of released our first sort of classic um, English style best bitter. Um, but we talked about it and joked about it. We weren't sure how it would be received. Um, so we, we just sort of kept it on a back burner. And then finally the time came and um, came up with the recipe. We tried a few different hop varieties um, and then we settled on Fuggle and sort of the rest has been history. Been out for just about a year now and it's just, it's phenomenal how well it's been received so what can you tell me about this recipe so it's, yeah it's quite a deep amber color yeah, um, and very bitter so what am i going to have to be putting in so um start with um low color marisotta as your base malt in terms of percentages of what we use we use 88 percent of that we use four percent malted wheat four percent amber malt and four percent of a medium crystal malt I'm just doing my math. It adds up to 100. So that's... <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you want to be adding about 50 grams at the start of the boil of Fuggle. 30 grams for your scale. 15 minutes before the end of the boil. Yeah. And then finally 80 grams when you um, take it off the boil. That's flame out. Yeah, exactly. It's probably going to take you a while to stir that in, but you'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeast. Um, so we use a White Lab strain in our best, um, which is WLP013. Um, it's a sort of English strain, and it does actually add quite a lot of character. Burton Profile, White Burton Lab profile. 13, yeah. AXM Maris, 4%, three other fun things, 68 yeah. degrees mash, all the fuggles. Try pouring out of a plastic cast. <laughs> exactly. What could go it's wrong? It'll be fine. The next step is getting the ingredients. I'm going to get those and the yeast uh, that Greg suggested. I'm going to get that from Malt Miller, who I always use when I homebrew. But for the hops, I had a chat with Ross Hookins. He's very happy to send me some, and he's actually launching his own web shop so that homebrewers can buy some. So I'm going to get some award-winning Fuggles direct from Hookins that I'll use in the brew. And I need quite a lot of them, according to Greg's recipe. That's a problem for future Johnny. Let's get these ingredients ordered. <laughs> A 
Okay, so the ingredients are here. It is brew day. So I've got my fresh foggles in from Hukin's Hops. We're taken on a veritable tour of British maltsters because we've got Warminster's floor malted wheat. We've got crisp amber malt. We've got crisp crystal malt. And then we've got Simpsons. <laughs> Maris Otter. Got an original gravity hopefully of, of 1.045, which is going to end up at 1.013, which is roughly within the parameters of Greg's beer. Uh, the surprising thing is it's going to be at 40 IBU, which is both very high for a British bitter, but also not quite as high as I kind of thought it would be, given how bitter this recipe is, how much bite and tingle there is. Um, but I've already had three coffees, so I'm well versed in brewing today. I think it's time to get this water heating and get our brew on. So we've mashed and we've sparged and we're just coming up to the boil. I have never seen a protein break the likes of the one I saw on this beer. It was somewhere between two tectonic plates moving apart and bread baking in the oven. We very nearly had a boil over, so I had to stir. I was filming. At some point, I just went, nah, I'm going to stir that. Uh, but now it's bubbling away happily. Um, I actually, I just about missed my original gravity, um, as you can see here. So we're just going to let it boil off for a little bit to try and gain some gravity points. However, it's hop time. It's fuggle time. It's time for that fug life. Um, so as I said, these came direct from Hukin's hops down in Kent. Soft, floral, orangey, kind of marmalade-y. And a nice spicy, earthy thing as well going on. Not too much earth, like... You know, we know British hops, they're not as citric, they're not as, you know, perhaps kind of in your face as American hops, but there's a gorgeous, gorgeous aroma to that that shouldn't be dismissed. And it's gonna be a big part of what this beer is. So the first huge addition is gonna be um, 50 grams of Fuggles at the start of the boil, or 10, 15 minutes in once I boiled off some points. And that's gonna be 50 grams of this lovely hop, which is, yeah, hundreds of years old. It's the parent of uh, Cascade. So in many ways, it's almost the parent of the American brewing revolution because that came from sort of the invention of, of hops like Cascade and the use of it in uh, Liberty Ale or uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. So the boil's on, which gives me about 40 minutes just under to work out how the hell I'm going to serve this on cask in my own home. So Greg and I had a little chat about that. In terms of making a real ale, so from the fermentation onwards, what's different to making a keg beer? When we're daily monitoring the sort of the gravity of the beer, once we see it sort of two or three points above terminal gravity, we'll kick the chilling in, um, which then um, will sort of halt the fermentation. So that's when I'll put it into whatever I'm going to be pulling the beer out of. Exactly, yeah. What am I going to pull the beer out of, Greg? <laughs> well, <laughs> we we, uh, we need to have a bit of a brainstorm about this. I mean, I, I think we've got a few options. You want to serve it through a sparkler, right? Yeah. In the traditional five points way. Um, the recommended way. Um, Let's not get into that. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put that to one side. Now, the first challenge, and the one that could just cover me right here, is I need to find a traditional hand pull. So I'm hoping there's going to be one on, on the internet that isn't being used by a pub anymore, or perhaps it was excess stock or something. So first, I'm going to hunt for that. So it turns out, getting a car scale pump is not that hard. There's lots of professional websites that will just sell me one as if I'm a pub, but they cost a good couple of hundred quid. So I've actually found a renovated one on eBay just over 100 quid delivered and i think it's even aimed at people who might want to use it at home it comes with cables i don't know what i'm going to connect it to yet but that seems like the absolute best option 
So with that on its way, I've got to find something to connect it to, and that's the bigger challenge. So I need something that I can actually ferment in. It's not gonna be doing a huge amount of fermentation, but it's gonna take us down a couple of gravity points and just naturally add sparkle to that beer. Tiny bits of carbon dioxide that will make the beer fizzy, give it its head, give it its flavor, give it its body. It's gonna be beer. Despite several beers, I was totally stuck, so I called the most practical man I know. I can't believe that's Brad. Hey man, how's it going? How's the brew day going, more importantly? The brew day is, I've, I've missed some numbers, but I've fixed it, it's going all right. Uh, the main issue I have, the reason I'm calling is because I'm a bit stumped on what's gonna happen afterwards. So I've got to pick what I'm gonna do my secondary fermentation in. And Greg and I had a chat and I've been thinking through, like he offered to give us a steel, proper steel pin, People can't do that at home, so I'm not going to do that. We don't all have Greg in our lives. Um, the corny keg thing, like, would be great, but I'd have to attach gas to it and feed gas in or oxygen in so that it comes out. That's really technical and complicated. The plastic fermenter, which we did our first ever home brew on together, that leaked, so I don't want to use those. Just need some out-of-the-box thinking. Or what about in-the-box thinking? I'm just thinking back to my, my days in Kent when I, I used to go to a lot of micro pubs pre-lockdown. Mm. And um, these guys, they're, they're like converted shops. They don't have sellers and stuff. They're literally using bag and box uh, in a cold room and they're just pulling it through a line. And there's no pr the pressure is, the bag is like containing everything so you don't have to pump gas into it or anything, right? Yeah. You're just sucking it out. That should work. So, so long as I can get hold of... Bag, empty bagging boxes, like, I feel like maybe I'll have to buy 50 minimum, but I'm okay <laughs> with that. Yeah, why not? Good call, Brad. So I've just managed to get three 10 litre bagging boxes with cool branding on the box for a couple of quid each. So given that Brad lives in Kent, given that my hops came from Kent, that should have been my first option really, shouldn't it? Well, I don't know if any other homebrewers feel the way that I do at the end of a homebrew day, which is mental and physical exhaustion, and I haven't even cleaned up yet. But the beer is in tank. It's gonna start fermenting, hopefully super quick. It's a warm day, as I've discovered to my cost. So we should see some pretty quick action. Um, and then I'll be monitoring the gravity, which finally did hit, uh, well, one point short of what I was hoping for, happy with that. Um, and we should see a big, quick drop off where we can get this into the secondary stuff. My only concern now is, will it be so quick that the bag in boxes don't arrive before it's ready to go? Fingers crossed.